Hey guys! In the last part of this series, we talked about the concept of color weight and how having fewer colors can be beneficial. We highlighted the importance of neutral colors and we briefly discussed how to harmonize colors in your photos. Today, we will take a deeper dive into colors. If you haven't watched the first part, I recommend checking it out as some of the concepts here will build upon the concepts discussed in that video. Idea number 5, aim for contrast. We know from color theory that orange and teal works together, they are complementary. So does yellow, green, and orange, they are analogous. We know these combinations work, but we don't always need to follow them. In fact, any color can work with another provided there is enough contrast. Take this photo for example. This follows a complementary color scheme, blue and yellow. All the other colors are not bright enough or are desaturated. This photo works not just because of the colors but primarily because of the contrast. To demonstrate this, let's change the color combination. You will notice that even though the colors are unrealistic and exaggerated, we still retained a good subject to background relationship. That is, their separation is still clear. There are several factors that still make the image relatively pleasing to the eyes, such as the number of colors in the frame and their respective weight, but contrast plays a big part. In fact, because of contrast, the photo will still work even without colors. Value is more important than color. Take a look at this photo. Let's say our goal is to draw attention to the man. Even if we change the color of his clothes, it will have little effect. The problem is not the color, but the brightness of the subject against the background. There is just not enough contrast. With enough contrast, we can get away with almost any color. Most of the contrast work should be done on the camera. When you take a photo, aim for strong subject and background separation. Post-processing is more about enhancing contrast and less about creating contrast. The previous example shows us the importance of value or brightness levels in the photo. Now let's look at how we can improve contrast by manipulating colors. We can change the hue. Colors that are close to each other have less contrast compared to colors that are far from each other on the color wheel. This is one reason why complementary colors work. They have the maximum possible contrast from each other. We can enhance contrast by shifting a color farther from another color. How much shift is acceptable is something that you will have to decide. We can also change the saturation. We can desaturate the colors that we want to draw less attention to. And we can intensify the colors that we want to highlight. Colors that are more saturated tend to draw more attention. Taken to the extreme, you will arrive at something like the color pop effect. Lastly, we can manipulate the luminance. We can single out a color and change its value. We can add white to the color making it brighter, or we can add black to make it darker. Depending on the context, we can use this to draw more attention to our subject. I separated these three for presentation purposes, but they are connected. For example, changing the hue will affect the luminance, and changing the luminance will affect the saturation. By prioritizing contrast, we are able to push our colors farther and still come up with something relatively convincing. Idea number 6. Watch your saturation. I hired a professional model for this portion of the video. For this photo, our goal is to highlight the colors of autumn. And let's say we want to do that by boosting the saturation of the red and yellow leaves. Saturation refers to the intensity of a given color, and there are several ways to manipulate it. First, changing the contrast will always change the saturation levels. See how the leaves become more vibrant as I adjust the contrast slider. Note that we are able to change the saturation without touching the saturation or vibrant slider. Here's the photo compared to the unprocessed image. Notice the change in the intensity of the colors. Second, 
We can manipulate the saturation through saturation sliders. Boosting saturation this way can collapse color gradations, making the image appear flat. This is because areas that were previously unsaturated became saturated leading to lost tones and reduced color variety. Compare this photo with the previous one. Notice the missing details in some parts. So how come we did not lose tones when we increased the contrast? That is because when we increase the contrast, the saturated areas become more saturated and the unsaturated areas were barely affected. Using the saturation slider manipulates the saturation without working on the luminance, which most of the time will give us an unnatural look. In most cases, increasing the contrast is the better way to increase saturation. Doing it through curves is probably the best way because of its precision. I demonstrated the tools separately, but you would normally use them together. The important thing to remember is that changing the contrast will also change the saturation. Too much contrast can lead to oversaturation or undersaturation. Knowing this, we can have vibrant colors without sacrificing details. Quick note, increasing the saturation will pull the colors apart. This will create a better color contrast. But if you remember idea number 4, desaturating the image can help with harmonizing the colors. Finding the right balance between these two ideas is key. Idea number 7. Define the context. Draw your attention to the woman in the foreground. What is the color of her shirt and umbrella? Is it dirty white? Gray with a yellow overcast? Or a very light yellow? Let's look at another version of this image. In this photo, our subject really stands out and there is no doubt that her shirt and umbrella are yellow. Thanks to the blue overcast, we are not confused. Seeing this version, you are probably more convinced that even in the first photo, the shirt and umbrella are also yellow. They are, in fact, the same. Not just that they are both yellow, but they are exactly the same. While colors have true absolute values, how we experience them is mostly subjective. If you want to highlight a particular color, you don't always need to modify that color. Sometimes what you need to do is to change the context. Let's talk briefly about color temperature. Take this green for example. Is it a cool or a warm color? Most people will say cool probably because we associate it with cold or calming things. But to be precise, we don't know if it is warm or cool because there are no other colors in the frame. If there were yellows, oranges, and reds, then green would be a cool color. But relative to blue and teal, green would be a warm color. This is a shade of green. If we add blue and teal colors, you'll see that our green feels warmer. The longer you look at it, the more it becomes yellowish. In fact, if you didn't see green previously, you might think the color is desaturated yellow. Now if we add warm colors, our green feels cooler. It is as if we shifted the green to teal. There is no set rule on how to use color context. Just remember this. How we perceive a particular color is affected by the other colors in the frame because colors exist in relation to one another. Idea number 8. Don't overthink it. If color theory overwhelms you, here's my suggestion on how to start improving. First, prioritize contrast. It might be a good idea to practice shooting in black and white. Second, don't overcomplicate it. Focus on only one color. For example, red. Take photos of red objects against neutral background. Fill the frame with red to make it dominant. Introduce a red color cast to an image. Look for red against green background. Try split toning. Use red in shadows and yellow in the highlights. Try shifting the midtones to red, then green in the shadows, and teal in the highlights. Try doing all this with red, then pick another color and practice again. 
Try not to overthink it. Color theory should help you, not limit you. Beware of color theories. Theories in color photography are dangerous. The plain fact that there are so many of them proves my point. In the next parts, we will analyze photos and learn color theory from the masters. We will also edit some photos and apply what we learned so far. I'm Kebs and I'll see you next time.